All right, it's a little after three, so we're going to go ahead and push to get started, if that's okay with the chair. We can do a quick roll call of who's here, a little bit of housekeeping, and get moving. Is that okay with you, chair? It looks like John's muted. So Jessica, I'm gonna have you go ahead and do that roll call, please. All right, so we're just gonna go down the list. Uh, so far today, we don't have anybody joining us in person. Everybody uh, chose to join us via Zoom today. So um, nobody in the room except for uh, Jessica McMullen and myself, Jessica Bechtel at PPACG. So out on Zoom, I will name off everyone that I see. If I miss you, just let me know and uh, we'll make sure it's shown that you are here for the minutes. Um, so I have Carol, Paul, uh, Roy, Chair DeVoe, Shelly, Ed, Ann, Donna, Bill, um, Michael. Is there any other CAC members that hopped on that I didn't see? Yes, and Paul. Yep, got him. Anybody else going once, going twice? All right, so with that, uh, when making a motion, just remember to state your name clearly, uh, so that way we can capture those in the minutes. And um, if you are not speaking, if you'll just make sure you mute yourself on Zoom so we don't get the background noise. Uh, if you need to comment or anything, the chat works great for that, or you can raise your hand on Zoom. Um, we monitor those as well, and we'll help the, the chair to, to know you wanna speak. Other than that, I turn it back to you, chair. Yeah, can you guys hear me now? Sure can. Finally, I think somebody released it for me. Okay, uh, let's begin the meeting. This is uh, the Community Advisory Committee meeting of September 29, 2021. Um, taking care of calling a roll on that, thank you. At this point, we'll ask as, as a whole, the agenda minutes and board financial reports. Does anybody have anything that they want to add, change, correct, delete uh, concerning those. And if they are, speak up now. Hearing none, we'll look for a motion to pass all three of those. And we need a motion and a second. This motion is Carol. I made... Wait a minute. We stepped on each other one at a time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Uh, as Carol Campbell, I will move to approve those two. And Ed, you can second me. <laughs> I will second you. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign. If that, we'll go on to public comments. The public can email general comments or comments regarding the, the agenda in advance of a meeting to the PPACG office administrator at Bechtel at PPACG.org. Okay, do we have anybody that wants to speak as a public comment? Is this the time to do that? We received nothing by email. And I okay. don't think we have any guests here. So unless there's anyone online, we are good at, to go. At this point, we'll move on to informational items. Okay, the item A, PPACG military planning program update. Paul Roche, military planning program manager. Paul, you're up. Paul has not yet joined us. So if it's all right, um, if we can have Jason um, go on with the 4B traffic safety media campaign. Okay, fine. We'll move to item B for now. And we'll come back for Paul. Traffic safety and media campaign update. Jason O'Brien, transportation planner. Jason, if you're there, it's your turn. Um, yep, I'm here, and thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I actually think that we've uh, we've spoken with this group uh, late last year about this item, but we've had another year of the campaign, so we thought we'd check in, um, give you an update, and then ask for your guidance a little bit for next year's campaign, which we're planning on doing. So uh, I won't go too deep into the background, but I'll just give a, a brief recap. So um, the project really began in 2018 when the region broke its historic um, traffic crash fatality record. Um, so PPACG started asking around about what the regional organization could do to help. 
Um, so we talk to law enforcement, um, county planners, traffic engineers, um, and folks in education, and pretty much everybody agreed that um, it wasn't a problem with the roads or the design or enforcement. None of that was being done differently. The real issue was um, worsening driver behavior and, and poor decision making that just, that just seemed to be getting worse and worse and was defeating a lot of the traditional safety measures that were being taken. So our approach to that was a public messaging campaign. I think that lined up pretty well with the problem. Um, so last year we hired Drive Smart Colorado uh, for their expertise in that area to design a public media campaign for us. And they, they picked out three real themes from the conversations and the data that we have of uh, drunk driving, distracted driving, and motorcycle safety. Those were three, three areas of particular problem in the region. Um, and so uh, last year's campaign was entirely via social media um, because the traditional media was made expensive by um, by the presidential campaign that was going on. So that was really kind of out of reach. So it was all social media. And at this point, um, I would ask uh, Jessica, if you can show those ads, um, the video ads that were developed. Uh, there's a- One sec, I'll load those up for you. Sure. And there, there should be a handy little folder with three ads in it. Yep, got them. Thanks. All right. So while she's getting that queued up, um, we did develop the ads in several different formats. You're going to see the video versions. Oh, I'm going to stop talking so she can play those. Don't crush your life. According to the latest research, driving under the influence kills or injures one person a week in the Pikes Peak region. Be safe. Drive smart. Pikes Peak region. Don't shatter your future. Locally, motorcycle deaths happen almost weekly during the Colorado riding season. Be safe. Drive smart. Hey, Pikes Peak region. Don't text and drive. One in five distracted driving crashes result in serious injury or death. Be safe. Drive smart. Thanks. Um, can we move to the, the slides now for this item? Yep, let me get that loaded up for you. Sure. So that was the video version, but the ads were developed in several different formats, so they could be displayed over several different social media platforms, which we'll show you in a second. And we hired a first Drive Smart hired a sub consultant who is sort of an expert in optimizing these things to get us the most efficient reach for our dollar. And then we hired the same folks directly this year just to make sure that we had a lot of efficiency and we're getting a good reach with the social media component. One thing we did differently this year was that we added radio, which we really couldn't do last year, but we thought that would help us get um, the full reach to, to all the demographics that we wanted to hit with the campaign. Um, okay. And we can actually move on to the second slide at this point. I'll, I'll get back to that. So we'll show you a little bit of um, the type of optimization that was done here by our consultant. And it's hard to measure the long-term efficiency of these things. We did get some, some numbers uh, for results. But what we do know was that it was very, very efficient and we got an excellent reach per dollar. So I'll just cut ahead a little bit, something that's on the slides. And we got about 5.2 million views on social media um, just in the month of August last year. We've been running the campaigns in the summer because that tends to be our, our peak accident season, crash season in the region. Um, and there were about 50,000 engagements. Um, so. That was just folks out there interacting with the ads in some way, clicking on them, listening to them, reading them. So it didn't just flash in front of them. Um, <clears throat> another thing that happened was it was nice to get some real world validation of the, the project. We had a lot of people come tell us that they had seen the ads, 
or heard them on the radio this year. Anybody in the audience um, see or hear the ads this time? Well, anyway, at our we asked the same question at our board meeting where we had a bigger audience and we had a, a whole bunch of folks in the in the audience raise their hands and say that they they'd seen or heard the ads. So that was kind of fun. Um, so we did add radio this year. Are we are we having a little trouble with the slides, Jessica? Are they not showing? Um, I don't see them. Oh, let me try again because it looks like they're showing on our end. Let me let me back out and do it one more time. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I thought we were sailing along. They're they're not essential. Technology. Let's try this again. So it's a multi-year campaign. Um, we we have uh, partners up at CDOT who do these types of public public messaging campaigns um, pretty much every year. And they say that they do get some bounce in their crash numbers, that they do get some results from running their campaigns, um, but only if there's some repetition. So, you know, the, the common wisdom for these things is that just doing a one-off doesn't really have much impact. So we're happy to do this across multiple years. We had a 2020 campaign and we had this year's campaign with social media and radio, and we're planning on having a 2022 campaign. Um, they've each been funded um, with, with $50,000 of PPCG planning funds. And that's the plan for next year as well. It could change, but as of now, that's what we have budgeted. And now we've got slides. So um, sorry about skipping around. The, the slide that's in front of you now is just sort of, uh, just sort of flashing in front of you the, the type of optimization that was done across social media platforms. This was from 2020, but we did the same type of thing this year alongside the radio ads. And then we can go to the next slide. Um, okay, I think this might just be a click through. There we go. You can just click through it because I've already I've talked past some of this stuff. So these are just some of the ad formats because each of the social media platform has its own little formats and requirements. So. Happy to have a consultant to put that together and you can just keep going. So this is just, a, oh, sorry, that last one was just a snapshot of um, one of our radio buys that we did. So um, Jessica McMullen was kind enough to take the time to learn about this and to make a couple of um, radio ad bundle purchases. So this was um, one of the two, I just wanted to show it to you, is the iHeartRadio group and they own a bunch of radio stations and you purchase a certain amount of reach from them in your demographic um, for the radio stations that they control. We did iHeart and then another bundle purchase. So just wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, we've gotten a little bit of feedback so far about what we might do um, differently or in addition in the 2022 campaign. Um, uh, AM radio has been mentioned, and then a couple of other specific stations have been mentioned. Um, but we can really branch off even more if we like. So I thought we'd just open it up and, and ask for your ideas, um, if any, any thoughts you had about this. And we can't promise to do everything, but we can see what we can do within the budget. So what's your, I'm sorry, this is Shelly with the League of Women Voters. What is the average age of texters? Average Good question. Group? Um, of the, you mean of the people who are texting and driving? Yes, sir. I, I don't, I can't answer that one specifically, although I could probably find out and get back to you. I can tell you what we, what we did run into um, age-wise, if this is helpful, was that early on, a lot of people, their sort of reflex reaction was that the problem must be um, young, young drivers, inexperienced drivers, and older drivers um, who, you know, it just seemed to be uh, the reflex to blame these two groups. And what we find when we look at the data is actually opposite, that the greatest increase in crashes um, the past few years and behind our record-breaking fatality years were um, experienced drivers, middle-aged drivers um, making poor decisions. So that was a little bit of a surprise for a lot of people, but the, the data do bear it out. So I don't know if that's, if that's helpful. It does, it's my demographic. Um, Mine too. <laughs> um, and no offense, um, 
I don't pay, I am in marketing and I don't pay attention to those ads on any of those places that you just pay. I just, because I'm too, it's almost like white noise for me because we're in that business. And I definitely don't listen to radio. No offense, but it is a, you know, it is a dying breed of um, our communication as well as newspaper. So my, I guess my thought to you would be, um, or my question to you is to find out what other means, because again, I totally scroll past Instagram, Facebook ads, Twitter. It's just, again, white noise. I see that enough on t television and I fast forward it through that too, as well. Um, so any other ideas on that demographic podcasts, uh, those types of things? I guess would be my first go-to because radio podcasts are the next radio. That's interesting. Yeah, we can definitely look into that. Yes, we can. And uh, that's why and we're, we're aware of what you're saying too. And that's why we didn't want to rely entirely on radio or social media. So uh, in 2020, we sort of had to rely on social media because the presidential election just had traditional media so expensive. Um, and we wanted to get a good reach for our dollar. And uh, we added radio this year. Um, we sort of split split the budget between the two, but we're definitely open to trying other media. So I've got um, podcasts as something to try. Um, any other any other ideas in that vein? Events, Jason, maybe some big community events, you know, that sesquicentennial event celebration for Colorado Springs, right? Okay. Something like that. Maybe your dollars would go well there that beer brew, um, maybe again, my demographic, I'm a beer drinker. So maybe yeah. some, um, some community events. Community events, yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm taking notes here, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so I've got podcasts, community events as things to explore, anything else? That's pretty good for now, but if you've got more, we can, we can look into more. Was next door on your list? No, but that's interesting. I'm on next door. I didn't door. think about it. Advertising. Yes, sir. All right. Anything else or anybody else? Anybody have any more questions for Jason? If not, well, thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Very informative. For and thank you. Okay. At this point, okay. Thank you again for coming. Uh, Paul Roche, are you up yet? He has not yet joined us. So we'll just keep going through the agenda and summon back to him when he arrives. Okay. The next item is an action item, which is FY 2023-27 tip draft for public release. John Lasotos, uh, transportation inject. Uh, John, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, this is actually an item you you've seen before, um, and just as a, a, a by way of an update, um, I think last month you saw it to, as the information item that comes through first. We don't always do it, but what we like to do is have something goes through first as information, let people look at it, and then we bring it back again uh, next month for information. After you guys uh, saw the the item and said, "Yeah, we're you're good. Go ahead and take it to the board for information," um, we had some issues with uh, the Colorado Department of Transportation, and rightly, rightfully so. They looked at some of the the tables and they said, "Hey, the numbers don't quite add up correctly." Um, and that was because that uh, it wasn't intended to be the full amount of numbers. It was only going to be for that five-year period within the TIP. Um, so we had to sort of take a step back and look at that. Um, additionally, there was also um, some numbers uh, that didn't quite jive because we were using um, different match amounts uh, than, than CDOT. And so we also had that issue. So we pulled the item from the agenda uh, to the board. Um, we've gone back to the uh, uh, the TAC. Uh, they have fixed the the funding numbers and additional programming uh, 
Uh, so everything balances now on the um, uh, STP dollars and the transportation alternative dollars. So that problem has been fixed. And now, and we've also uh, working with CDOT, uh, we believe we can fix the, um, um, the sort of informational issue with looking at some of the numbers, uh, the, you know, that chart. So we think we've got everything worked out. And so again, we're bringing this back for you today. Again, you've seen it before, but what, you've, what you're seeing now versus what you saw last month is slightly different in that um, we've adjusted some of the dollar numbers so that we have fiscal constraint, i.e. we're not trying to spend more than what we actually have. So the fiscal constraint issue has been adjusted. Um, and then we will work with, uh, continue work with CDOT to do that. So what we're looking for today is, again, hopefully um, everyone's still comfortable um, looking at this, um, that we're, we're looking for you to go ahead and send it back to the board uh, with a um, recommendation, recommendation to release it to the public. So what we'd like to do is then go to the board, um, is it next week or in two weeks, right? So we'd like to go to the board in about two weeks or 10 days at this point, not next week, but the week after, and ask the board to go ahead and approve it and, and go ahead and release it to go out to the public. Now, again, once it goes out to the public, that just starts the process, right? Uh, so there still could be changes based on that public input and, and everything else. Um, so that's where we are today on all of this. Um, the whole thing where we're, uh, we're trying to keep on schedule because we've already sort of uh, made plans to do open houses on certain dates. So if we can stay on schedule, great. But if people are really like, I've got major concerns, this is wrong, you guys are rushing it. Um, we, we can tap the brakes and go ahead and slow down. Um, we basically gave that opportunity to the TAC and they were comfortable moving forward as is um, because again, those adjustments, and again, it's subjective. So I'm not trying to uh, lead, lead anybody in a certain direction they're not comfortable with, but from their perspective, um, it, they felt that it was um, relatively minor adjustments um, so they were comfortable moving it on and trying to keep on schedule. So hopefully if you guys are comfortable keeping it on schedule. Um, after I answer any questions you might have, um, we're looking to get a motion uh, to uh, go ahead and take it to the, uh, that uh, when we take it to the board of directors uh, that you guys uh, also will recommend releasing it to the public. Again, it just goes to the public. It goes through that public process. It'll come back through um, the committee process again for final adoption um, after we've done that. Last thing I want to do is um, I'm going to uh, mess up his name, I'm sure, and my apologies for that. Um, but uh, uh, was it, uh, is it uh, Mr. Sh Sugart? Is that right, uh, um, Jessica? Anyway, you have a, a CAC member. Um, uh, Gary Shugart, uh, he sent a question in advance and I see he's not, I don't see him there, uh, but I would like to go ahead and sort of address his question, even though he's not, because some of you might have um, the, the same question, or if he comes back and looks at the video, um, he, he can get his answer as well. So he had a question on the vote to approve the, this particular item. Um, he had a question on a tip ID 2019-20 um, that it shows a cost of 45.72 uh, million. Can you provide me more detail on the spending breakdown of the project and will this project replace the current asphalt with concrete paving? So that particular project, um, the number probably means nothing to you because it not, not, meant nothing to me. I had to go ahead and look it up. Is actually the I-25 Fillmore to Garden of the Gods project, uh, bridge repairs and resurfacing. Okay. So that's the question that he had. I reached out to CDOT and I asked them um, to help me answer that question. Uh, the, the, the additional funds uh, that, are on, that are coming on, that $40 million, is part of the State Senate Bill 260 allocation. Um, so again, those are funds that are uh, coming from the legislature uh, and back. So that will help uh, get that project finished. Uh, that was the first part of his question. And then the second part is there was, he had sort of the, hey, what, what's the funding treatment? Um, 
and it, on where, you know, the pavement type. And according to see that, that their plan, their design plans are only about 15% complete. So because they're only 15% complete at this time, they have not actually determined whether or not it would be asphalt or concrete. Uh, that's something that would um, be done uh, down the line. So I think that answers his question. Hey, Kathleen, I didn't see that you were on until just now. I don't know if you heard uh, any or all of my explanation of how we're working with you guys at CDOT to fix the problems you've identified with the funding tables and other stuff. But I did want to give you an opportunity if you wanted to comment on any of that, um, if you heard what I said and, and I got it right, or if uh, you want to add anything. Thanks, John. I didn't, um, I just joined you, um, announced or covered, but um, I feel uh, confident that we're getting the problems worked out uh, in the tip and, um, and, and feel confident that um, it won't be a concern, uh, just more clarity on a couple of items is what I understand are the main concerns. Great. So Mr. Chair, we're happy to take questions and I see that uh, Patty's got her hand up. If you want to start there, Mr. Chair. Patty, would you go ahead? Thank you. Uh, John, I just wondered if you could go ahead and let us point us to where those major changes are from what we saw previously so that we can easily identify those before we vote on that? Um, yeah, actually, so uh, can you, can you, um, uh, Jessica, just Jess B, can you go to the website and call up that 13 page document? It was basically the, the uh, page seven or nine or something like that. The, the major thing is that uh, the one chart got updated. And while she's looking that up, the one chart got updated to address the numbers. Yep, that's it. So, this one stop right there. Thank you. Or as Meatloaf would say, stop right there. Um, so the um, uh, that chart had to have some of the numbers updated because of the TAP and the STP uh, differences um, in what we had uh, used as a match amount. So we've adjusted that and those monies have been uh, sort of reprogrammed. So one place where it's different, if you scroll down a little bit more, when we get to the actual projects. All right, if you could stop right here, uh, uh, Jess. This particular chart would have had a couple of minor changes. For, well, first minor change is um, we went through and we, um, again, cha changed, again, a few a dollar amounts on the um, uh, some of the projects for STP and TAP. So that's slightly different. And then we have not fixed this chart yet in terms of um, what uh, Kathleen and CDOT have been talking about. You see how it's got the five years there and then the total? Um, what we had done um, at PPACG is we have the five years within the program, but then we gave you the overall project total. So if you try to total up those five years, that total doesn't, doesn't jive because there's a, a bit of information we haven't given you uh, because we thought we were being, you know, clever by keeping it on a page and uh, making it streamlined. Uh, but uh, as Kathleen points out, it actually becomes more confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and provide a note saying there's additional rollovers and uh, what, were we, what do you say, Kathleen? We said additional rollovers and previously expended funds um, along with the current program make up um, that total difference. So those are the things that, that are different. If, if that's helpful, and maybe it's not. Does that help? Uh, yes. So 
John, were those numbers then that you referred to earlier, were those reduced or increased? We talked about fiscal restraint, so I assume they were reduced, but can you clarify? Uh, sure. The, the STP dollars, um, we actually received, um, I believe, approximately uh, 45 uh, more thousand per year over the th for three years. Uh, and those dollars were added to the big project there, which I believe is uh, the, the Woodman um, extension. On the transportation alternative size or transportation, uh, transportation alternative projects, uh, because we used a different match amount, uh, that was actually a negative number. I believe it was like 18,000 over the three years or something like that. And that project was actually reduced um, in funding to, to make it up. But again, that was the, um, that, uh, excuse me, the 30th Street project. I didn't tell you the project. I told you the amount, but not the project. The 30th Street project was reduced, reduced by that amount uh, because it was basically uh, the main project that was receiving all of the transportation alternative funds. So one, that one 30th Street project received slightly less um, funding while the Woodman project received uh, slightly more funding. Uh, but when you look at the big scheme of uh, 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 the hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, it, it's a relatively small amount in comparison. Thank you, that was all I needed. Okay, thanks. Anybody else have any questions for John? If not, we'll look for a motion to move this back to the main uh, uh, committee and uh, uh, prepare it for putting out to the general public. I need a motion and a second for that. Patty Bencher, I make a motion to recommend the PPACG Board of Directors release the fiscal year 23-27 TIP draft for public review and comments. This is Roy Rosenthal, I second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Now we go to, uh, well, before we do that, is uh, Paul Roche in the group yet? He is not. So we'll okay, just continue. We, we move on uh, to item B, amendment to the moving forward 2045 Pikes Peak Area Area Regional Transportation Plan, Mark Northrop, Senior Transportation Planner. Mark, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Mark Northrop, Senior Transportation Planner and Lead on the Long Range Transportation Plan at PPACG. So today, uh, staff is asking um, you to recommend approval of the plan amendment to the PPACG board. Uh, but before you take action on the plan amendment, uh, I want to provide a quick overview of the amendment and let you know what's happened since I came to you in July. Um, all the plan amendment information, including the plan amendment document and a supportive material can be found in your agenda packet. Uh, the plan amendment includes 11 new project proposals and one request uh, for change to existing program. Uh, given the revised financial plan estimates, all the proposed projects can be incorporated into the plan without the need to change uh, funding for any existing projects in the plan. And the plan will maintain fiscal constraint. Uh, an environmental justice analysis was performed on all the projects in the plan, both the new as well as the existing. And uh, staff determined that as a group, uh, the projects do not disproportionately impact federal protected classes and have the same potential impact on minority and low income concentrated areas as that of the entire region. Uh, it was also determined that modeling didn't need to be run uh, given the minimal impact of the new capacity projects. Uh, in terms of what's happened uh, since we last met, uh, the plan amendment went to the board in August as information. Uh, the plan amendment document was released by the board uh, for public comment at the August meeting. Uh, prior to release of the plan amendment, the board requested additional language be added to the rail station design construction project uh, in the plan amendment document, letting stakeholders know that final approval to spend funding on the project would be done through the TIP. Uh, also, no comments were received uh, during the public comment period. 
A uh, public hearing was held at the September board meeting. Uh, there are also no, no comments received uh, during the hearing as well. So unless anyone has any comments or questions, uh, staff is asking you uh, to recommend approval of the plan amendment to the board. Thank you. Patty Benger, I recommend approval of the amendment to the moving forward 2045 Pikes Peak Area Regional Transportation Plan to the PPACG Board of Directors. Thanks, Patty. I was on mute. We need a recommendation uh, for, I mean, we need an, an action for the a motion and a second. Do I hear a motion and a second? Well, this I think Patty Wood already did it. This is Roy Rosen. We're looking for us. This is Donna Wood from NEPCO. I'll, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. We got that recorded who it was. Good to go. All, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Member discussion. Oh, we got to have something. This is Patty Benger. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that the Pure Water Colorado demonstration, I don't know if you've heard about that on the news, it's a mobile unit that shows the advanced purification process behind direct potable reuse. Um, so it cleans recycled water to a level that meets or exceeds all drinking water standards. So we are uh, offering some free mobile demonstrations if anyone would like to see how that um, how are you treating that water and considering how to potentially add that to our portfolio in some future years. Um, there's some public tours available uh, Tuesday, October 19th from 11 to 12 and Saturday, October 23rd from 10 to 11. I'll put a link in the, um, in the uh, meeting. So if anyone's interested in, in going to that, it's really neat to see the numerous cycles and different technologies that we're using to clean water. Water is such a scarce resource, of course, so we're doing all we can to look to the future and um, potentially bringing this as a new system. Patty, I've read articles over the over the time that they even make these small enough to put into a to an individual home where, where, where you can take care of doing that and process it. Is this for more of a large system of doing a city or a, or a large company or something to that effect? Yeah, potentially. Um, this came from a grant um, from the state and we developed it with the Colorado School of Mines. Um, so it's a trailer that um, shows how it could be done on a larger scale. So we're using this as the first utility um, to do the mobile demonstration to see what it would take us to do on a larger scale, maybe implementing some of this at some of our existing facilities uh, in the future. Great idea. That's moving forward with progress and technology. Excellent. Yeah. So I put the link in the chat if anyone would like to uh, come and see what it's all about. It's a really neat tour to go to. It's it's pretty quick, about an hour. I'll be glad to. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for her on this subject? If not, items for the next CAC meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got something else for member discussion, please. Oh, no, that's fine. Go ahead. Sorry about that. This is Shelley with the League of Women Voters. I'm sure as most of you already know, school board elections and ballot issues are coming up in November. So October is kind of a busy month. If you haven't seen those candidate signs out yet, you probably will. Um, it, it depends on what district you live in, but pretty much most of the school districts in El Paso County have a um, school board election this year. And then of course there are a bunch of ballot issues. So on October 23rd, the League of Women Voters is having a ballot issue discussion at the Sand Creek Library on Academy Boulevard. And um, if you wanna go to the League site, depending upon again, what school district you're in, um, our website is lwvppr.org. And of course, if you have any questions about any of your candidates, our go-to is always vote411.org. So thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for her? 
If not, items for next CAC meeting. Uh, I-25 gap update from CDOT. Anybody have any comments on that or anybody want to talk about that? Be awesome if the update is done. <laughs> yeah, that's just fine. Thank you. The PPACG meeting and event schedule. You got anything on that, Jessica? We just wrapped up. We've got one more class left in the 2021 Ent Retirement Series, and that's going to be um, Monday, October the 4th. And then we begin our last um, Medicare series um, on Thursday, October the 7th. And the only thing other than that is we'll begin discussing next month the nominations committee and the schedule of our meetings for the holidays with November and December. We'll obviously be coordinating with the other departments to see if there's anything they do need votes on, if they, they need actions by PPACG. But that is something you will be hearing from us starting next month is the conversation. Um, when are we gonna meet in November and December? And who wants to serve on the executive committee next year and who wants to serve on the membership nominating committee? So. Anybody have any questions? Jessica, are organizations allowed to have um, meetings in person yet at the building? Not really. We are still in progress trying to define things, but with the current CDC recommendation um, of all people wearing masks, we are not fully encouraging meetings here. So, thank you. Anybody else have anything for the good of the order? If not, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Anybody want to make the motion? This Barbara is Rosenthal, I'll move uh, to adjourn. And this is Carol Campbell, I'll second. Very good. Thank both of you. I, I, I've had a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying goodbye. No. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. See you in a month, okay? All righty. Sounds good. All right. Thanks.